Welcome back to now the lecture number 4 of this course on soft nanotechnology. Uh, we had a sort of uh, extended introduction and now I am sure you are convinced about uh, certain uh, utilities of nano patterns and also some aspects of the nano scale how uh, things are slightly different in terms of the interaction forces at the nano scale particularly due to predominance of Van der Waals forces and how that might lead to some bit of influence uh, stability of thin films. Now, one of the things that is very important again at the nano and meso scale is surface tension. Uh, in one of the uh, classes earlier, we talked about the difference between a surface and an interface. You may recall that in your school days, probably in your high school, you sort of started to talk about surface tension and viscosity roughly at the same time, but as we have learned fluid mechanics and stuff like that. Uh, we have seen a very significant role of viscosity there, right? how viscosity affects flows and how uh, flow becomes slower or faster depending on the viscosity of the system. Uh, we have all seen that. A even simple example like you take uh, two bottles of identical volumes of liquid, let us say you have honey in one of them and you have water in the other one. You sort of topple both of them, uh, so that liquid flows down and you will see that the uh, honey is flowing slowly and that is because honey has higher viscosity. But we rarely talk particularly in the context of fluid flow about surface tension. Uh, however, we will soon realize that at the nano scale surface effects become very, very important and the reason for that is pretty obvious because as size becomes smaller, the surface to volume ratio sort of starts to uh, increase and therefore, we need to look into surface tension in rather greater detail. So, what we will do in this course, uh, this particular uh, class is that we will understand or build our concepts on some of the fundamental issues related to surface tension. So, we have already defined, you can uh, follow this particular slide again. We have defined what is the difference between a surface and an interface. So, a some amount of material. So, important thing to note down is every object will have ultimately have a surface or an interface irrespective of whether it is a thin film or a huge chunk of material. Now, whether that uh, surface, if that surface that particular block of material is making is with a non condensed phase that is either with air or vacuum, where essentially what it means is the number density of molecules in the non condensed phase is much less as compared to that in the material itself. It is termed as a surface. In contrast, if it is actually in contact with another condensed phase, it is termed as an interface. This is more of a pedagogic discretion, but this is very important for our understanding. So, surface is a boundary between a condensed material or a condensed phase with a rarefied gas or vacuum. An interface is boundary between uh, condensed phase with another condensed phase. So, th this picture this is in fact, these are the here it is a uh, self standing self supported film which has surface on both sides. This is a coated film or a coating which has one surface. Thus, this is an interface and this is a surface. I have also given you example of a film where it can be bound by within two uh, medium to, to let us say two blocks and then it has interface on both the sides. Uh, a surface or an interface is ideally not a zero thickness mathematical entity that is extremely important to understand. Like uh, the properties of the two phases do not really drastically change uh, at the interface or the surface as one typically uh, draws or would expect, but often what happens is there is in fact a interfacial region over which the um, surfaces uh, change uh, slowly. Uh, there are issues related to this, I mean there, there can be uh, situations where this interface eventually broadens with time, but for the time being we will not discuss about those cases. Uh, well, of course, in case the two phases are completely miscible, uh, then eventually miscibility you can uh, sort of uh, relook from a new perspective now. Uh, miscibility is a situation where the interface ceases to exist. and. Uh, certain other implications of miscibility we will also talk as we look into certain other issues related to surface tension. So, this is a term that all of you are very, very familiar with surface tension. It is 
often also called surface energy. So, what exactly is this uh, so called uh, surface energy? Uh, if you remember at this point I would tell you to remember the first law of thermodynamics which sta states that energy is constant. Uh, suppose you have a block of butter and you take a knife, you cut it into half. Now, as you cut it into half, you are spending some amount of your own metabolic energy, right. But once you cut it, if you, if you, uh, if you uh, notice that no amount of butter is uh, sticking to your knife, then essentially before and after cutting mass is conserved. So, why did you in fact spend this much amount of energy? And reality is that you have in fact spent this amount of energy in creating the two additional surfaces corresponding to, to the two smaller blocks. So, uh, that is I mean so, sort of a very simple, but practical manifestation of surface energy. Yes, you in fact need to uh, spend energy to create a new surface. So, what it is uh, like? So, here you have a material, a bulk material let us say and you are cutting it let us say into half two materials. Okay. So, in order to cut it into these two half you are actually creating surface here and here. What are you actually doing? You are in fact removing or overcoming by spending this energy from outside you are overcoming the interaction between these molecules. Please understand these are not chemical bonds, because you are not breaking individual components of a molecule, but you are essentially dislodging molecules or removing molecules of the same material. So, what are you essentially overcoming? You are overcoming the interaction forces between them. Irrespective of the material, we have already learned that one of the type of interaction can be the van der Waals forces. Of course, if you if your material has polarity, then there can be polar interactions like hydrogen bond etcetera, which also you are overcoming. So, the first definition that comes. So, the first thing uh, the one of the immediate things that you may uh, start understanding that surface energy higher will be the or if there is polar interaction, then the surface energy of the material is going to be higher than uh, a material where there is no polar interaction and we will see a proof of this uh, uh, soon. Uh, so, simple uh, definition of surface tension or surface energy is the amount of energy necessary to create a surface typically per unit area or whatever you write. Uh, from a molecular standpoint, so see what happens is uh, what is also important is from the standpoint of a single molecule, what is the fundamental difference now between these two molecules. Please understand that this molecule was earlier resting over here or this is the same molecule and therefore, it had no difference with this particular molecule, but once you have created the surface, now these molecules have different properties and can you identify what is the difference in property? The difference in property is you see this molecule is surrounded by 6 number of molecules according to this particular sketch. There can be other types of arrangements also, but this is a brief sketch and you see roughly you pick up any molecule in the bulk, you find the way I have drawn all of them are surrounded by 6 number of molecules. right? So, what is this called? This is in fact called the coordination number. So, even if we consider simple van der Waals interaction between all the molecules, so it sort of has identical interaction in all directions. So, the net force acting on this molecule is sort of 0, because you have similar molecules, the interaction is same across in all directions, so net force is 0. However, now you see any molecule that is resting on the on the surface. It has a similar interaction with these molecules, which are all identical molecules of the same material, but there is nothing on this side, right? There is nothing on this side. So, one immediate thing that you see that not only this one, but let us say any surface molecule is sort of surrounded by lesser number of molecules or the coordination number at surface
is low. What is the consequence? Consequence is the net force acting on this molecule is now not 0. And this is the energy that you actually need to supply, right? You just multiply the net energy that is required for one molecule, net unbalanced energy for one molecule multiplied by the number of surface molecules, that is the energy you actually need to supply to create a surface and this is manifested as surface tension. Uh, I will revisit this uh, somewhat later. Uh, before that, let me pick up a simpler uh, example that involves surface uh, energy and uh, there is a very important concept, but a very simple concept also. So, what you have is, this is something that you have to visit again and again and again. Suppose we have a smooth flat surface. and you put a drop of water onto it. You all know that in most cases the drop takes a hemispherical shape. You most of you also know that this hemispherical shape is due to surface tension. energy. Uh, v safe is one step lower, uh, higher we can go and identify. In fact, this hemispherical shape corresponds to the lowest possible surface area for a given volume or a given mass, given volume let us say. So, uh, there can be different other configurations also. This in fact corresponds to area of the liquid for a given volume. So, now uh, once the drop is at rest, so you can identify certain things and one of the critical thing that is identified is theta E which is known as the equilibrium contact angle. Why it is so called? Because uh, this is the shape of the drop at equilibrium. Now, uh, we have already talked about surface tension and interfacial tension. So, this particular solid has a surface tension, the liquid also has a surface tension. Where are they acting? So, over here the solid surface tension x which we will term as gamma s along if you draw a tangent at the point of contact. So, just for your knowledge, if you see the drop from the top, this is the view you will get as part of a sphere. So, this is the substrate this particular line is called the three phase contact line. Why three phase contact line? Because you have solid, you have liquid and you have vapor, all the three are coming in contact simultaneously along this line. So, if you do try to draw a free body diagram or try to do a force balance, if you draw a tangent to the liquid meniscus at this point along this line, the liquid surface tension acts and what is the energy component along this line? See over this area now the solid is covered under liquid. So, the solid is a non uh, is a condensed phase, the liquid is a condensed phase. So, in fact, over this area the gamma s is no longer acting, it is gamma s l, it is actually an interface, liquid solid interface. So, if you do a balance of the 
horizontal components of surface and interfacial energies, what you will get is gamma s is equal to gamma s l plus gamma l cos theta e. This is a very, very important equation and this is known as Young's equation. What does it give you? It gives you many things, though the equation is very simple, the consequences are not simple. Suppose you would like to put the same drop, let us assume the drop is of water, which is the most commonly encountered liquid and this is one number you may want to note down, gamma L for water is 72.8 millijoule per meter square. Now, suppose I dispense, I take two surfaces, two solid surfaces S1 and S2 and I put water, the same liquid and this is what I get. This is very, very logical and common because the two solid surfaces are likely to have two different surface energies. But based on the equation what we have already written, can you comment anything? Well, uh, the first thing that you can comment is theta E 2 is higher. What it means is the same volume, of course, the liquid volume in both the cases liquid is actually covering less area on the surface. In other words, the surface has some property. So, this can also be looked from a different perspective that the surface S 2 has some property by which it prevents spreading of liquid L on it. So, what is that property? This is important what is that property? If you now look into this equation carefully and for the time being you assume both cases, you will find that in fact, if you if you now plug in two different values, uh, a higher value of theta e and versus a lower value of theta e, gamma l remaining same you will find actually gamma S 2 is lower than gamma S 1. So, this is in fact a very important finding that what will be the shape of the drop if you put a drop on a solid surface is going to be uh, governed by a balance between the surface and interfacial energies of the solid and the liquid. This is one. Vis a vis, if the same liquid is dispensed on different surfaces, surfaces with higher surface on surfaces with higher surface energy, the liquid will tend to spread more. So, a liquid will tend to spread more on a surface with higher gamma S 1 and wh where do you get that? It is 
not that you have to believe because I am telling it, you get it straight away from Young's equation. Okay. Now, uh, as we talk about a liquid uh, is spreading more or spreading less, then the next obvious question that comes up is what are the limits of spreading? Well, if you now look carefully, you can look into this transparency, I will redraw it. Of course, the limits are, this is in fact one of the limits and what do you see? You actually see the liquid is spreading fully on the solid and how can this picture be transformed into this particular picture? So, this is the liquid, this is the solid. You in fact consider theta E 1 equal to 0 and you get, get this type of a configuration. This is what is known as complete weighting. versus what is the other extremity. So, the other extremity is, so on one hand we have complete weighting, I will take another slide. All these uh, scribbles I will also upload, so that you can refer to them and correlate to the notes. So, you have a surface. and you have a film that is fully wetting. So, this is what is uh, the other possible limit? What is the minimum a liquid can spread? Where a liquid spreading will be least if theta E tends to 180 degree. Now, this does not happen, but uh, well surfaces with contact angle close to 165 or 170 has been achieved. In between, you can have all different values of theta varying let us say from 1 degree to 179 degree. So, theoretically for the time being you trust me that this does not happen, this is non weighting. And in between any contact angle, it is actually partially weighting. If you look very carefully and uh, sort of do a bit of thinking, uh, it is a debatable question on whether a contact line exists here, uh, by contact line I mean a three phase contact line a contact line exist here or not. Uh, for, the, for the time being, uh, let us not bother too much about this particular situation, because this is still a theoretical conjecture. I mean complete 180 degree weighting while a drop is in contact is slightly difficult to perceive. Uh, people have started to use methods like levitation and things like that, where the drop is not in contact, uh, then one can achieve a completely spherical drop. Uh, but uh, whether you have a solid liquid contact line or not, that is a bit debatable. So, we worry more about this setting, which is which, which you actually see in most of the cases. So, here you can identify the equilibrium contact angle. See, uh, irrespective of the contact angle, in fact, your equation remains the Young's equation uh, remains. Uh, fully valid. And uh, you can always claim that 
the setting is roughly same whether your equilibrium contact angle is 5 degree or 160 degree because both are cases of partial weighting, but pedagogically or historically if the liquid is water and it makes an equilibrium contact angle of less than 90 degree on a surface. The surface is termed as a hydrophilic surface. So, the limit is theta e is less than 90 degree. On the other hand, if the equilibrium contact angle with a water drop is greater than 90 degree, then and the drop is water of course, then the surface is termed as a hydrophobic surface. Uh, please do not forget that uh, for uh, a completely wetting surface, a surface on which let us say water exhibits complete wetting is also a hydrophilic surface. And this discretion around 90 degree is more of pedagogic. I mean one can always ask that what is the great difference in the property of the surface between two surfaces let us say over which uh, one in one the water contact angle is 88 degree and in the other the water contact angle is 92 degree. Well, uh, they are very close, but there are certain cases where a difference manifests and that is something that we will learn in the next lecture and this becomes uh, very, very prominent when we start talking about structural hydrophobicity or structural super hydrophobicity or in other words instead of looking the weighting on a flat surface, we now start looking weighting on a structured surface or a patterned surface. These patterns are something that you are going to learn in the in course of this particular uh, course how to make these structures. Thank you.